Hey, welcome back to FHN. We are obviously here in the Bay Lab. Everything we do here in the Bay Lab brought to you, presented by Max Lure. Check out everything Max Lure has to offer at maxlure.com. Uh, a lot of what we're doing here, you won't find at Max Lure because it's more specific to curing bait for halibut. We're talking going after big fish, and to get there, we have to start small. How small? Well, it all depends on how big a bait you're willing to fish. And uh, as you just heard Mike discuss, you know, uh, purple or black label herring, salmon bellies, we're talking big strips of bait, big chunks of bait with a lot of scent, a lot of uh, color, a lot of, uh, a lot of things to entice halibut to feed. And it's no different when you decide to use uh, things a little bit out of the norm. For a lot of folks, uh, if you're able to come by smaller kokanee and or uh, planter rainbow trout, they make excellent baits for both halibut and lingcod. Do yourself a favor, pay attention to what we're going to talk about here, and you're going to find <clears throat> success in both regards. So, first let's talk about the smaller uh, kokanee, okay? And uh, Potsky's Bait Company makes a fantastic product called um, Halibut and Rockfish Nectar. Now, of course, I uh, ran out and I didn't get any in on time, but it's essentially your red nectar. It's slightly different than your standard egg red nectar that comes uh, from Potsky's and that they put some additional bite stimulants and extra krill and stuff in the Halibut Rockfish Nectar, but essentially looks the same with a different label. So look for the Halibut Rockfish Nectar, okay? Basically, it's really simple. Um, one thing to understand about this, this is 100% egg juice with, again, on the halibut rockfish nectar, same stuff, but more krill and uh, more bite stimulants that are conducive to those deep water fish. Um, it doesn't necessarily cure your bait. And when we talk about curing, it doesn't firm it up or make it to where it's more durable. If you uh, paid attention earlier, Tommy and I were talking about fish and durable baits when you're going down deep, banging off the bottom, doing long drifts, and you want to make sure you have a bait that's going to be durable. Simply by putting your coconut or trout into the rockfish nectar, it does, or a halibut rockfish nectar, it doesn't necessarily cure it up. So uh, it's very simple to make a brine that's going to uh, firm your baits up just a little more. Now, you can see these kokanee here, they have a little bit of color. They actually have a little bit more shine than this kokanee that is uncured. You can see how bright they are in the, in the tub here. This is nothing more than uh, two bottles of the nectar, a half cup of uh, uh, non-iodized sea salt, and um, one, about half a bottle of the, of the uh, fire brine. Okay, if I look at the fire brine here, now this, actually does uh, add some, some curing elements to your bait. It will help firm it up. But again, we're putting bait down deep and I wanna make sure they're durable. So I'm gonna add into this a small batch of five or six kokanee, I'm adding two bottles of the nectar, about a half, not even quite half a bottle of the fire brine just to have a little more liquid in there. Plus it adds a little additional UV. The red does have a substantial amount of UV. And I put in a half cup of non-iodized sea salt for the firmness. And I will add a couple heaping tablespoons of the uh, Posse's Krill Powder because everything in the ocean uh, responds to the smell of krill. It's very fishy smelling. You can't go wrong adding krill powder to your to your baits and your cures to add additional scent. Uh, one thing I do like to do is I take these small baits and I'm simply going to take a sharp knife and I'm going to cut, put a couple cuts not all the way through <clears throat> just down to the backbone and I'm going to put that on both sides and um, halfway through so open up that flesh a little bit and then right into the uh, the vat of fluid and I will cure these up for upwards of three or four days prior to planning to fish them um, we're making plans to get out Saturday the weather may or may not allow us to get out no big deal <coughs> excuse me I'm going to cure these up and uh, let them firm up let them get some color to them let them get the UV properties to them and if I don't fish them I'm not worried about it. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to actually freeze them, vacuum pack them, and then put them back in the freezer uh, just so that I know that they'll be ready to go when we do get a weather window that allows us to get out on the water. I'm going to fish these in Puget Sound, Straits Juan de Fuca, all the way out in the ocean. doesn't matter. Same bait is going with me uh, no matter where we're chasing halibut or deep water links. Okay, so you have that option. So if you go out kokanee fishing, you get a bunch of you know under 12 inch kokanee that you don't really want to fillet out, and you're planning some halibut trips. Nothing wrong with just taking those and turning them into bait. You can cure them, you can uh, let them let them absorb and get nice and firm and get the cure on them, so they have some color. That that red is going to add a lot of UV to them. If you just, uh, we got 
and you can uh, see how much red gets into the meat. It's really going to firm them up nice and then again if you don't go fish them just simply vacuum pack them and freeze them they're going to be good to go. So kokanee is a great uh, option. Rainbow trout is also a great option. Here we got a nice uh, nice size planter rainbow sitting here that we've already put onto a, uh, onto a squid rig. Um, that you'll just slide down that skirt and it fishes right over the head of that trout. Kind of the same principle. We have a we have a number of them here in this jar. You know, you can use some type of Tupperware container. You can use some type of um, you know whatever vat or container or bucket that you choose. This is a pretty simple mixture. I'm going to go with the dark green uh, Potsky's Fire Brine. I put one bottle of that in there, and I also put in a bottle of the Chartreuse uh, Fire Brine because of the UV properties in the Chartreuse. Bar none, out of all the cures that Potsky manufactures, when it comes to your Chartreuse, it has some of the strongest, most vibrant UV properties of any of the combinations. It even has more than the red. Um, so I rely on it a lot when I really want to put things uh, down in deeper water with a lot of UV and if you have UV light penetrating down there it's going to grab every element of UV that's penetrating through the water column and reflect off of that fish or that bait. So I will go ahead and put the green in to add color. That's how we get the that's how we get so much green onto these trout like that. And I'll also add a bottle of the the uh, chartreuse. And then I also want to hit it with the mega amount of chartreuse and UV capabilities with uh, using the fire dye. Unbelievable amount of dye properties in UV within this small bottle. I'll, I'll squirt about a half a bottle of that into here and it really gives these baits a lot of color and a lot of UV. Um, you just can't go wrong by adding that. I'm also going to dump in a liquid bottle of uh, the, the krill powder or the liquid krill um, or I can use the powder. Sometimes it's easier because it's all liquid base. You're just going to mix in a container. Uh, just dump the whole thing in there. Make sure you shake it up good because this does get kind of thick in here and the uh, lighter fluid will separate and be floating on top and the heavier properties will be sitting at the bottom and you won't get it all out of there. So make sure you shake it up good, squeeze it all out so you get all that krill in here and you can definitely smell it when you put a whole bottle in there. It adds a tremendous amount of krill properties as a scent additive. Also I'm going to put in a half cup of the non-iodized sea salt and uh, shake that up really well and then this jar for me, if you can find something like this it works great because you simply again let me set this over here real quick. I'm going to take these trout and just like that kokanee, okay, I'm going to put a couple cuts across just to open up that meat a little bit. Gets the salt down into there, gets the color down into there, um, allows for those salt properties and whatnot to get in there. And I'm just going to take that and I'll move that back over here, stick that on down in there. Now, these trout that have been in here, um, I've been in here less than 24 hours and it took on that much color, okay? So again, I'm just going to cut a couple slashes on these. All these trout will work. This one's a little on the small side, but you know what? It'll still make a good bait. We're just going to put them in this jar. And I'm just going to leave them in that jar for three to four days till they get nice and firm, lots of color. And again, if we end up not going fishing, I'm just going to simply pull them out, vacuum pack and put them in the freezer and save them to when we do fish. So let's talk about how to rig these. You've uh, created a durable bait. It's got a real uh, strong firmness to it. So I want to get down in here and get one of these ones that has some color to it. You, I can pull this out and you can see you can see the firmness on this tail uh, as we move back and forth. It's getting nice and rigid. Here's a nice size bait. It's got a lot of color, lots of, uh, lots of green to it. It's firm. That thing is going to fish really good. Um, it's pretty simple on how you rig these things, okay? So you have a rig here that is designed for about a 10 inch bait or so. The easiest thing to do is to take your top hook and you're going to basically go on the underside of this head and you're going to come right up through the middle and not get your finger and you're going to pop that out right basically right at the brain. Okay? And now we want to give ourselves a little bit of flex in this so I want to, I want to hinge this hook back and I'm going to uh, basically invert this the other way and I'm going to come out here towards the top of the spine about where the dorsal is at and I'm going to pop that sucker in there flip it around and then come on out and I like to bury that 
into the flesh, okay? And pop that in the top. Now I can hinge that forward and it's not gonna, it's not gonna pull out. Now uh, that is secure, but we can even do a little bit more. And that is where our magic thread comes in. And you basically are gonna take your trout and you're gonna multi-wrap like we did on this one here. And you're gonna start at the head and you're gonna wrap towards the tail. And you're going to get down to the to tail and make sure you lock that side hook in really nice. Get it nice and uh, fixed in there tight so it's not coming off. And then you're going to wrap back towards the center of your bait. You're going to put in three or four half hitches and then just snap that thread off. Now, you don't have to do that, but I can tell you if I'm taking the time to create a durable bait and I'm going to send it down to the depths of you know four or five six eight hundred feet it's gonna be bouncing along the bottom and you have fish pecking at it or whatnot trying to pull it off of there if I just hang it on there and leave it on the hooks it'll fish for a while if I multi wrap it with the magic thread it's gonna be a durable bait that's intact it's actually it runs laterally along your 150 pound mono and you've secured it by multi wrapping it with your uh, stretchy thread. So just uh, one little extra bit of advice on how to secure that bait so that it will fish durable. Again, you're taking the time to create these baits uh, for durability and color and scent and UV and all those properties. You want to make sure it's going to actually be on your hooks when you send it down to 800 feet to get after that 100 pound halibut. So uh, give this cure technique a try if you haven't cured up kokanee or rainbow for your halibut fisheries or even your deep water lings something you must do uh, not all kokanee and trout hit the table utilize them to bring something even bigger back to the freezer